Hi there, my name's Kyle White. I'm a first year student studying business management with marketing at Leeds Beckett University. And in this vlog, I'm going to be discussing Nike and how they use market orientation. And also, I'm going to be going over what I've learned in lectures one and two and linking them to my chosen business, Nike. Marketing is the social process by which individuals and organisations obtain what they need and want through creating and exchanging value with others. Market orientation is where the business puts the customers at the heart of all of its decisions and they'll think about like what the customer's needs are for what market they're going to, going to penetrate. Nike is a sportswear and accessories company that was founded on the 25th of January 1964. It was known as Blue Ribbon Sports back then. The company was founded by Bill Bowman and Phil Knight. Nike officially became Nike on May 30th 1971. The company takes its well-known name from the Greek goddess of victory who was also called Nike. Sports shoes are the most popular products from Nike. Through the years, the company has added more product lines for this category, such as venturing into different sports, like making football boots, a wide range of football boots, and also tennis and cricket shoes. The company also sells like apparel, such as jerseys, shorts, and other related products. In addition, Nike's product mix now includes a wide range of accessories and equipment for many different sports, including golf and tennis. One of Nike's most popular products would be the Nike Air Max. I would say it's one of Nike's most iconic trainers, and it was first released in 1987, and it was called the Air Max 1. Amazingly, the Nike Air Max 1 is still being made today, but with a few adjustments. Now, the newly made Air Max 1 Flyknit series make the trainer much lighter and comfier to wear. This shows how they have used market orientation by fulfilling customers' wants and needs. Nike are also highly appreciated for the creation of Nike adverts, where they use a lot of celebrity endorsement to help them succeed in the business world. Most recently, an advert was made which included many famous footballers including Cristiano Ronaldo, Anthony Marshall and Harry Kane. This type of advertising is definitely a reason why Nike succeed so much in the business world. The market environment is a marketing term and refers to factors and forces that affect a firm's ability to build and maintain successful relationships with customers and suppliers. <laughs> The United States, Nike's home country so to speak, has fantastic policies for growth which are especially valuable to this corporation. These include low interest rates and well arranged international tax agreements. As a company that produces and sells physical goods, Nike is, however, always subject to changes in the tax and manufacturing laws, so they do need to be wary of this as it could affect the business quite dramatically. For economic, Nike trades globally. Economic growth of China led to increase in sales within Nike by 25-30% to 30 per year. With Nike's deep pocket of finances, Nike has the resources to chase after small emerging markets in which they could penetrate to sell products. For social, Nike's main social media outputs are Facebook where they have 15 million likes, Twitter they have 2.2 million followers, and YouTube, they have over 385 million channel views, which is obviously very, very important to use social media if you do want to have a successful business, as it is what it dominates today's age, social media. Technological. Nike differentiated their product with an air insole to make their shoes more comfortable, which is using like very, very like expensive technology, which they'll have to buy to like make the perfect trainer or the perfect apparel. Legal. Nike is paying nearly no tax on its offshore profit. An environmental factor is that Greenpeace found that Nike had relationships with two textile processing factories in China which produced dangerous chemicals. So this could be quite bad, like could put a bad name on Nike if it was to get out into the media and stuff. So we do have to be careful about this. <laughs> linking to a business. 
one of them being the customers, which is the main one. Nike's market is global, seeing every single person as a potential customer. The bigger the range, the more potential customers. That's how Nike see it. They've done this by Nike ID. Nike ID allows customers to personalise their product. Nike works their customers' needs as it's no longer Nike deciding what trainer it is for them to buy as they can design their own. So there should be no reason for them not to like what they are designing as they have designed it themselves, whether this being shoes or even like apparel that they can buy online. Another microenvironment factor for Nike is suppliers. And it's really important for Nike to build a good relationship with the supplier because they provide the resources to make the products. Nike needs to ensure that the supplier have enough materials to make the product because this would affect the business sales. Nike's main competitors are Adidas, Fila and Puma. Nike can benefit from seeing what the other competitors are bringing out as they now know what they have to do to try and improve their products to try and make them better than the competitors. This Nike have quite clearly done this very, very, very well for the past 30 years as they have dominated the market and they've been a business that has just thrived of selling sports clothes and lots of different types of products which clearly makes them the most dominant in the sport accessories market. The last microenvironment factor I'm going to be speaking about is the employees and the employees play a huge role in the process of Nike's being a, becoming a successful business. The employees need to be motivated while operating in Nike factories so that excellent products are produced and they're to the highest of standards. But there have been in some cases in which employees have been working and they have no experience and have been working in extremely bad working conditions. An example of this is in Indonesia in one of the factories that they were working for a very, very low wage and they, they come under a lot of scrutiny from it, Nike did. And this can be very, very bad in a business as it can get you a bad name publicly and it will make people not buy clothes from like from you and it's really 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 important to make sure that, that you're treating the employees right so that they can produce the best products for you.